Hello everyone and now welcome to game two in this series between Yo I am Sui, Yo Iron Man Sui versus um, Thermotex Apollo AK here on Belshire Vestige. Always very nice to have title sponsors in in any um, esports scene, Taiwan esports, I believe having four title sponsors in the TESL. Now on the bottom right hand side of the map we have AK spawning as the red zerg. Meanwhile, Yo I Am Hui is spawning as the blue Protoss. Protoss versus Zerg here on Belshire Vestige, and AK really needed to take game one. And by losing game one, he has now fallen behind 2 0 in this best of five series since he is coming in from the loser's bracket. This is essentially best of five extended series, and Hui, um, doing better in the round robin play currently has a two to nothing lead after winning just one game will ak be able to rebound or will hui be able to cook up some magic once more let's take a look at the strategies now in a in game one ak did go for a spawning pool first no real harm or foul there ak could go for a spawning pool first once more just because he believes hui may try to go for some sort of proxy gateway play if you do go hatchery first against proxy gate you are pretty much up the creek without a paddle and um in a very very difficult situation trying to fight back Meanwhile, Hui perhaps banking on the fact that his opponent is thinking that he's going to be going for a proxy gateway is going for an extremely greedy Nexus first. So this is going to be a Nexus first fast expansion here on Belshire Vestige and Hui is going to get that economic opening that he wants. Now, in game one that we, we saw just moments ago, he opened up with a six gate warp prism um, all in. Uh, the reason why I call it an all in was the number of the number of probes that were out on the field. I believe there were only 40 probes out at at any given point. So Hui did cut probe production. AK needed to mount a, a counterattack, and even though AK had lost a large number of drones, he was not that far behind. It was the fact that he lost that hatchery and the production which really hurt him in the end. We're going to see now some Zerglings making their way out across the field. And AK, perhaps knowing that his opponent got, went for a hatchery, or excuse me, a nexus first, looks like he will be going for a very, very fast third base. That is normally what Zerg players do. If you know that your opponent has gone for a very, very fast a fast expansion, a nexus first, you can afford to go for a hatchery first, as we are seeing here. Now, will he be able to maintain an economic advantage is also another key point. This front door, even though it is not completely sealed off, is enough to handle these two Zerglings here. And all AK wants to do is keep track of what's going on as well. Now, one thing that we I want to mention, Hui was able to hide all of his gateways and his robotics facility um, from the peering eyes of those overlords. The overlords had tried to suicide their way in, but they didn't catch a sight of what exactly Hui was doing. Hui was then able to push in with that now faster warp prism, drop in some stalkers, some sentries, and then warp in six zealots extremely quickly. Zealots were the unit of choice because of their very, very fast cooldown time. And and what you were really looking for there was just a lot of supply in your opponent's base. AK now sitting on a 28 drone compared to 31 probe advantage. That will quickly shift though with the introduction of queens and spawn larva. You can see now that a queen is making its way in over here. There's already a queen here hitting off that inject as well. As overlords are going to position themselves for that suicide move soon. However, Hui cooking up a completely different strategy this time around, opening up with a Stargate. Now, the Stargate harassment is exactly that, harassment. I do not expect Hui to be able to execute and perhaps win by the 12 minute mark with this Stargate. He just wants to try and take down enough drones where this three hatchery advantage with Queens doesn't bite him in the butt later. By getting a couple of drones down early, he can then focus and get more units and then really attack with a heavy gateway force, which is what he needs. 
In addition, these phoenixes will be able to push back all of these overlords and start to deny scout. At this point, all AK knows or all AK will know is that there is a Stargate opening. With that Stargate opening, he should feel comfortable enough to perhaps just go for a couple um, go for a couple more queens and also go for a hydralis as we are now seeing in coming in from this layer. Double gas now being taken in the main. You can take a look. The harvester count finally in favor of the Zerg 56 to 45. On top of that, eight more, or excuse me, six more drones now hatching their way in as we're taking a look at very, very heavy drone saturation on these three bases. 16, 19, 17. Very, very heavy drone numbers here. And with this, he should have about, I believe, 72 um, drones in just a moment once he gets this last extractor down. With 72, I believe it's 72, is it 72? Um, 8 plus 24, um, oh, 16 plus 6, 22. Oh, he just needs 66. Excuse me, so 66 drones, that's the magic number there. He's going to build up an extractor here in just a moment, so he'll need one more drone. And, but he is looking at a very strong economy. Can AK hold on to this economic advantage, though, is the question. Protoss ground weapons upgrades coming in. You can see gateways, and lots of them are warping in here. This is a beautiful placement. As we're now taking a look at this pylon wall, there are some photon cannons. This will be extremely difficult to get any units to run by. On top of this, what I really like about Hui in this game is that he's completely playing a different style of game. In the previous game, he really cut off the probe count at, I believe, 40. In this game, he's at 50, and he is still training up more probes for his eventual third base. So AK is going to be seeing a completely different beast. AK, however, a beast himself with a 30 supply advantage. He is going into Hydralisk, and he is also getting Groove Spines. Will he get enough creep tumors on the map, though? That does concern me. AK with only a minimal amount of creep tumors means that these Hydralis are not going to be that fast. AK only has four queens, even though he's running up on soon to be four bases, and the limited queen count is really going to hurt him. You can see that the Hydralis are just trying to reinforce a bit too far. He is walking too far away. And this is going to end up hurting him. We are going into a Spire now, most likely for Corruptors. We need to get Corruptors out quickly as the Zerg is now trying to test that front door. Not going to work out at all. In comes the Hydralis as well. The Hydralis should be able to get in a lot of damage there. There is one poor Zealot trying to come in as we now see the Photon Overcharge. Here's an engagement, but AK is just throwing away his units especially with a well-placed force field down. One Void Ray does get taken down. These Hydralis perhaps should be backing off. It looks like they will be retreating. But this just goes to show you, AK lacking all of the creep tumors isn't able to get his units out onto the field. I, I believe it was Ender Wigan who said, or is it Bean, who said movement is one of the most key aspects in battle. And... You arrived to the party a little bit late, and that's what happened. AK arriving to the party late had to deal with additional Void Rays, additional Sentries, and additional Zealots. All right, Zealots um, now going to be able to slice through those Zerglings rather easily. The Zerglings, um, actually, those Zerglings have 0-1 upgrades. So unless the Zealots have, nope, just 1-1 one, one upgrades, now starting 2-1 upgrades on those Zealots. AK, though. Still looking pretty good. 76 drones, 61 probes. AK still has everything in his court. Will he be able to fire off and get the kill? Let's take a look. Will he be able to just, you know, so to speak, pull the trigger and take down one of these bases? So far, Hui is still warping in additional gateways here. He is now sitting on 11 warp gates. Um, that is a, a, a huge number of warp gates. I got to admit, 11 warp gates. And with 11 warp gates, that means he can instantaneously build a 22 supply army anywhere where he has pylon power. Mutilus now making their way in, and it looks as though, yes, he is going to get a couple of probe kills here. This could be a, a huge loss at the main base as the Zerglings are baiting away units at the natural. All right, Mutilus are now trying to make their way over. It looks as though, yes, they are going to find more probes here at the natural expansion as the Mutilus are going after probes. However, this massive Protoss army 
gonna simply ignore everything at, that's back home since he does have the larger army here. Archon's taking down that Mutalist there. Who is gonna be able to win in this out? AK needs this game to go long. Queen wants to finish this game up quickly. A whole bunch of spying crawlers, but those are all too late once again. 50 seconds to build and they will all get taken down before they are able to be completed. All right, this massive Void Ray and Hallucinated Colossus army coming in and this is huge. AK's got to be wondering how exactly Hui has such a large army only to now figure out that they are all hallucinations. Zealot's now going to go in and try and take down a couple more spine crawlers as this is coming into to be a base, a base race. However, Zerg army is mainly consisting of Mutalists and Mutalists are better for hit and run tactics. They are not the, the sheer damage potential not nearly as high as we now see a 98 to 65 supply advantage. Hui banking on his 2-0 advantage going, you know what, I can try and do a base race and even if I lose, I can come back and play a, a different strategy the next time around. These Archons are upgraded 1-1. One, one. Meanwhile, the Mutalists are now looking to head back home. Zealots are coming in here as well. Another hatchery looks like it will be falling. And if this hatchery falls, pretty much all hope is lost for AK. AK, it looks like he pulled the trigger too soon there, trying to engage only to realize that his opponent's army was superior. And now he is down by about 35 supply. Zealots looking to finish off this hatchery here. It looks like it will get taken down. Mutalist going to finish off all of these Zealots. But the main army is still alive and running. And it's really these Archons that are the issue. Those Archons will take down all of those Mutalists if they try and clump up. AK, however, does have an impressive army still. Only a 10 supply difference. Poor Mothership Core getting caught out of position. As we are now taking a look. A whole bunch of photon cannons. What, three photon cannons here protecting. It looks as though phoenixes are now being trained. And once you have phoenixes to deal with Mutalis, the game is pretty much imbalanced for Protoss. And the Mutalis now going to try to chase after that phoenix. The phoenix able to back off there. The Mutalis still engaging. Going to take down that Stargate there. As this is now turning into a full-fledged base race. AK hoping that he can finish off the rest of the buildings. He does have a couple of, of extractors around the field, and that could be enough. He also has drones on the field as well, or drones being trained, and that could be enough here as the Mutalists are not engaging against those Phoenixes. There you go, finally backing off as those Mutalists now need to figure out what to do next. Void Rays, Archons, Zealots, the absolute perfect unit mix in order to take down and win against a base race. AK is in trouble. He cannot straight up engage this Protoss ball and he can't even really retreat as the Phoenixes are there as well. Phoenix is able to fly around, get off some very easy shots. There is the GG. AK losing two straight games as Hui moves on. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Hope you guys enjoyed this best of five series. Hui coming in from the um, upper side, the winner's bracket, coming in with a 1-0 advantage and wins in two straight games.